Whew. I am running so late today. This is half of a sandwich from a diner. This massive tuna melt we got yesterday. Brunch. But hello, everyone. Thanks for joining my stream. I'm, uh, yeah. I uh, slept in. That postponed a meeting. Oh, wow, look at this. It's 1121. Posted exactly 10 minutes ago. Good stuff. I am, uh, I actually don't normally go at 11. Today is just a, um, a special. I had a meeting and then it worked out well because I slept in anyway. So I'm just switching this back to 1030. There we go. Good stuff. But thanks for joining, y'all. Let's let's uh, let's do the normal start. Uh, hi, I'm Josh. I'm a full-time open source maintainer in the TypeScript ecosystem. I um, I work on a few different projects, most notably TypeScript ESLint, which is the tooling that lets you run prettier ESLint similar important JavaScript tools on your TypeScript code. I also, as part of my open source duties, have the pleasure of hanging out with folks on the internet or in person sometimes, such as Elian. Hello. How's it going? I was just thinking about you for some reason. I forget what, what the context was. It might have been Astro. Maybe it was React Brussels. Oh, yeah. I've been seeing a lot about uh, React Brussels. Oh, yeah. A lot of work now that uh, Astro 3 is out. Awesome. Yeah, I'm sad I couldn't join y'all. Look, look fun this year. Um, what am I doing with my life? I'm, uh, yeah, I don't have anything like particularly salient to work on here. Uh, so I figured I'd just, ah, uh, ooh, Raycast. What is Raycast? Well, I remember this from somewhere. Raycast, like, uh, what is this? Is this the thing? Ooh, cool. Yeah, I've never gotten into the whole like extensible launchers for Mac and all this uh, ecosystem, but I know that people love it and get a lot out of it. That's cool. Ooh, they have a pro thing now. Oh, look at this web. Ooh, I love a, love a background with like the noise on it. Is that noise? dynamically generated why are they doing that what's going on here where's the uh it's the background image i'm just curious about the uh <laughs> about the image preview 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 oh it is static yeah cool LLM inside your spotlight. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Great. AI everywhere. Hmm. I should get working. All right. Um, I have some notifications. Um, I should start taking a look at them. First up, let's look at this. Um, hi, Connor. Hello. How's it going? Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Um, Wow, I've got tuna in my mouth. It does taste good. Uh, all right, so first up, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, I have this plugin in that someone made it. Uh, they didn't have time to maintain it, and now I'm on it, and it's relevant to my interests. ESLint plugin expect type uh, lets you put little type assertions in your code. Actually, the... Um, description got out of sync i was doing some stuff with the repo um yeah and uh it's got a little list of references to other tools that do this type of thing and then um we mentioned that um vtest actually has like its own testing types thing now which is kind of cool so docs issue um i should i should do actually you know what i'm not going to take this on it's a good first issue um i'd like eh I'm conflicted here. On the one hand, it's a good first issue, and I like leaving those open for people to contribute. On the other hand, this plugin, um, it's I'm it's more and more starting to use it and put it out there, and I really don't want it to not mention such an important ecosystem thing. Um, 
so yeah, I'll just take this on right now. Um, where's my warp? There it is. Eoslint plugin expect type. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, so I was a while ago working on converting this to my um, template TypeScript node package, now called create TypeScript app. And you know what? I gave up. Um, or rather, I put it on hold. I didn't, I didn't give up. It's like in a draft PR or something from a different computer. All right. Uh, get pull. We still using npm on this one. So I'm just going to quickly assign this to myself and work on the readme. Uh, yo, yeah. So Dan Vandercam, author of Effective TypeScript and all around cool, nice guy. Mentions not exactly here what the difference between these two matches is. Heck have I know. Oops. Oh, where did that come from? Testing type. Includes a Emma. Hello, thanks for stopping by. How's it going? Includes expect type of. I always put things alphabetically if I can. And expect type of um, assertions. They say syntaxes. I call them assertions. It's my readme and I get to say what I want. Okay, check out B um, docs mention test. Ooh, it was too much. I'm sorry to hear that, Connor. If it helps, um, I actually added a, um, a few different tiers to it since, if I remember, I think this might have been since you tried it. Um, but uh, where is it? Yeah, so base mode, we have minimum, common, everything, and prompt. So if you want to re-add with just specific parts, it might be doable. And all right, thanks for asking. I, uh, I, I'm having a late day. Uh, <laughs> I slept in, so everything's kind of shifted forward. Docs, mention, test, and read me. Ugh, stupid passphrase thing. I need to get on that. <laughs> mentions normally I'd leave a good first issue open for longer but I really don't want to not mention the test and it's issue 89 created I'm also trying to chow my way through this can I bounce off hello Allison Hi, thanks for coming. How's it going? How are you? I, uh, oh my God, every time. Blue sky. What is happening? You know, I feel pretty confident that this is uh, going to pass. So, merge. YOLO. The good pulling out of hair. Okay, well, have fun with that. Glad to... Uh, oh, yeah, no, I do have a PR draft. Glad to hear that that's working for you. <laughs> um... Ooh, this is going to be fun. This one I'm actually going to take off screen. Um, I'm, um, there's an effort. Fun fact. Uh, all the formatting rules and some of the stylistic rules are moving out of ESLint core and TypeScript ESLint into ESLint.style. Very excited about that. 
so I gotta I gotta get on to some discussions there. Um, next up, oh yeah, um, module documentation tracking issue. Um, I posted on this, and now I need to unsubscribe because people are just posting a bunch of feedback that I don't care about right now. Yeah, Liam, I'm so excited about it. Our the list of rules we're not gonna have to maintain anymore. Oh, oh, so good. Look at this one. What is this? Rule proposal. Okay, so this is someone who hasn't read our contributing guidelines. Um, ooh, ooh, I have a saved reply for this. So the list, the rule is, or the, the issue is listed as label accepting PRs. They're asking for progress. Progress, nice. Backslash is from probably a bug somewhere in my code. Commented, ha ha, my little passive aggressive message. Ah, yeah, yeah, Lady Blue Notes. Also, first time chat, welcome. Thanks for coming in. Uh, yeah, I uh, I was up late. That's probably why, actually, I was. No, you know, what? I stayed up after Corbin's stream. I think. Yeah, Corbin's stream is part of why I was um. I was there, crutch coin. Um, I was up too late, and uh, yeah, the whole time I was just resisting the urge to to make bad jokes. It was really fun. Good boy. So uh, I think this PR is um, ready for review. Awesome! Yay! So I'm gonna add it to the list of things I'm working on. I should be. I know. I d I just feel bad. I don't want to derail his stream. With my stupidity. Also, I thought of a really funny dirty joke. It's too dirty to say on stream. I'm sorry for teasing you all. Um, and it's been like the first thing that goes through my mind. Uh, around the prefer read all new rule. So it's hard to think of not dirty jokes now. And if before anyone says no, say it on stream. No, it's real vulgar. Ask me in real life. Uh... Awesome. Great, thanks. You can, if you uh, re-request review through the GitHub, right? GitHub re-request review. Where's the docs for this? Is there a table of contents? Oh, excuse me. Oh, there it is. I will be... Ooh, excuse me. <sighs> I'm sorry. All your encouragement about being vulgar is bad. You should all, should all, quit that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Prefer read-only private field support. What is happening here? <laughs> Privates. <laughs> um, backing issue. Check hashtag private class fields. We're asking that if you have a hashtag field. Hmm. So the point of this rule is that if you have something that's private, or like not accessible, visible in the types of type system to the outside world in the class, it should be marked as read only if it's never changed. Oops. Where's your things? Yep. No such lock on hashtag privates. So. Mm -hmm. I had asked. Can we add a mention of hash privates in there too? The explanation is no longer accurate now that they're also considered by the rule. So private member variables, whether using the private modifier or private fields. Uh, I'm just gonna nitpick a little bit. Docs, just a bit of nitpicking. The comma is unnecessary, I think. 
and for consistency plus clarity, it's good to to sh to show that it's the private fields thing. Yeah, I like this. Oh, I finished my tuner mods. I'm still hungry. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Cool. is resolved. Uh, docs looks good. Um, oh boy, look at this. Why are there so many new tests? That's uh, good for you. <laughs> look at this. It's freaking 911 files or uh, lines plus minus 11 and 907 of them are on the test file. Wow, okay. So yeah, I mean, just looking at the code, um, if the name is a private identifier, that's another way of indicating that it's uh, it's modifier, it's that private equivalent. So that's great. A lot of these, a uh, lot of these, my God, I think they just basically copy and pasted in a good way, like this is good copy pasta. Uh, <laughs> the existing tests and just swapped them out to privates. So if we scroll down to the invalids, yeah, I mean, this looks great. I'm really, really pleased. And I remember, actually, I, I previously reviewed this, went a little more, like, fine combing through the test and was happy with it. Is a tuna melt my first meal of the day? Yep, I woke up at, like, 10.15, late for a 10 a.m. And, uh, <laughs> I, I know, actually, I'm going to be taking an ad break and, like, I don't know, a few few PR reviews or something um, so that I can go get myself water and put on pants. Uh, yeah, this looks great. Awesome, thanks. The tests are just as amusingly, as awesomely thorough as before. Well, uh, what are, what are y'all eating? Slash, what have all y'all been eating? Anything as glorious as leftover, uh, leftover tuna melts from and a wonderful. By the way, first time I've ever seen this. We went to an American style like classic diner last night. You know, like malts and whatever uh hamburgers and they had an entire half side like the full menu of half of it one side of the sheet was vegan i've never seen this at a diner really really nice it's only 8 30 for you leftover lasagna let's go love lasagna. i love lasagna so much oh the layers the cheese the melt oh love it swanzor nico hello what are you eating what have you consumed today? <laughs> Tell me. Anyway, uh, this uh, this looks good to me. I applied a little change, so I'm just gonna let it sit in the background, running its its little CI checks. Love lasagna. Oh, someone else talking on the deprecated formatting rules thing. Asking about the changes. Okay. So, um, oh yeah, let's look at this issue. You forgot your breakfast, oh no. I'm sorry to hear that. I always keep a box of granola bars by my desk for cases, times when I don't have the energy. All right, so this issue, oh, did I post this? I did post it previously. All right, so going back commenting a bit on this issue i closed Boop. oops why is it where did that number six come from like why is it not syntax highlighted or link highlighted whatever All right. um so someone asked for array type to tag to read only of string to read only string also turn read only of string into read only stringer Oh, interesting. Maybe I'm wrong here. So the array type rule says, um, boop, boop, boop. Um, yeah, instead of using, it's a stylistic thing. So instead of using this, the, the generic type, use this. But the issue is saying, um, we only have string. Array. Oh, you know what? I think I misinterpreted. Yeah. Hmm. No, I think I. 
Yeah, so the 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 issue Ugh, love eggs. Truly breakfast for champions. Um Yeah, so the issue is saying, hey, the rule will detect array of string and read only array of string, but it doesn't detect a read only of string array. Um, um I think <clears throat> Yeah, I think this rule shouldn't cover that case because read only isn't specific to arrays and users often end up writing their own equivalents deep read only deep etc yeah uh oh geez what is that type there's a library that provides uh utilities for is it type fest i think yeah, yeah, yeah type fest read only deep I uh, hear at the door a cat. One sec. Cherry. Nah. He's all agitated today because I slept in. Gamer guy. I'm just wondering, is there like a, a docs page for each of these rules? Merge deep. Okay, so is it going to be read only? What? He gets so little agitated, makes me happy. Okay, what was I looking for? Read only, deep. Okay, here we go. Okay, same link. Read only, deep, etc. But at its core, but at its core, um, any wrapper around the array type isn't what uh, this rule looks for. There, but that's but mm, I don't like that scene, since it doesn't make sense. Um, so and we could ex um, add in a list of options for this rule. Uh, but um, hmm. trying to expand this rules purview to the assorted wrapper types folks use, um, a, it's area of responsibilities more than just array types. Yeah. So basically, like, in my opinion, this read only type saying read only string should become read only string array. That's not this uh, array type rules responsibility. I think it's that um, that the array type rule looks at the array type itself and any wrappers you use around it, like um, read only or writable or whatever, like that's separate. So won't fix, ha <laughs> ha. Oh no, why is there the red on this one? So yeah, check it out install. You know what, this might need to be merged from main. What's going on here? Um, uh, okay, I, uh, we've seen this occasionally. One of the other maintainers is going to take a look. Uh, build failures. I'm just going to rerun. YOLO. Side note. Uh, look at this. No notifications. Philly JS. Oh, yeah, there's a Philly JS club thing. Anyone here in Philly? Is uh, Dat Boy 420 here? Or. Joe, I don't know. Um, no notifications. I have no more work to do. Ha <laughs> ha. Just kidding. I have so much work to do. Oh, why is that in my bookmarks? No one is there. Type. I don't know why that's in my bookmarks. Might have been a mistake. But all right. And of course, I actually have plenty of work to do. I have issues and. Um, actually, look at this. Look at this. I actually don't have too many things to look through, so that's nice. Um, someone yell at me if I'm wrong about this, but I'm under the impression I actually got through um, most of the like 
old waiting for review things and type sheet BS lints. I, I'd fallen uh, off the radar a bit and let a bunch of things last for too long. So now I'm going to look at my PR queue and try to start bumping things. Uh, merging them. All right. So TS API utils lint failed. Logs have expired. Last tried September 11th. Okay. How do I? Can I not? Doesn't merge or update from main, whatever. Um, just going through these old PRs. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to update a bunch of these depend about ones from main. We've had some instability issues that have since been fixed. Please enjoy all those CI minutes I'm now spending in GitHub. All right, update dependency C spell to 738. Everything merged. Uh, yeah, I guess y'all could see that if you want. Uh, this is my PR query, if anyone's interested. The pull requests that don't have the don't merge label, that aren't blocked, that and so on and so forth. What's it gonna do? Oh yeah. Going through some uh, renovate auto update PRs now, trying to uh, clean up the old queue. Blue sky, invalid response out of data. So that's nice. Um, why is it commenting on this? Oh, because I manually touched it, so now renovate won't. Okay. So that's three of them. One, two, three. ES build to. Ah, oh, there's still zero dot text. Um, so yeah, website test failed, but website test failing is probably fine. I think we removed them just in case I'll update branch to main. Ooh, update dependency types Babel code frame. This might be interesting. Failures, gonna have to update. Um, and then ESM plugin jest. That has web test failing, probably fine. Is my sound really low? Oh no! First of all, Hunting Hagrid, thank you, I am a wizard. Second of all, Nico, thanks for mentioning. I had turned, warning y'all, I'm about to turn my volume up. Boop. Is this better? Sorry about that. I was doing some AV stuff and uh, needed to turn it down. Um, thank you, by the way, as uh, one of my favorite things is when someone lets me know that something's off in my stream because, you know, I, I don't know these things. So, uh, Thank you. I appreciate it. That's that's better. Thank you. Awesome. All right. I also just noticed in this one if the title should be feats um, ESLint plugin and then that's how we do our naming. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm a loud person even when I wake up. Um, oh, geez. All these, yeah, I'm just going to update the branch. Here we go. Or, wait, I oh, know this. You can tell the GitHub uh, UI is out of state because, oh my gosh, look at all this. GitHub is struggling to handle me today. Can't touch this. Okay. Um, also, I just see this big green. So turns out, um, I feel bad about this. Uh, Josh Sheen is on the triage team, and I thought he had merge permissions. Turns out that's not what they get by default. So I've been like labeling his things as uh, like, oh yeah, you can merge whenever you want, but he couldn't. So oops, I gave him the permissions, which is, oh wait, no, we do a uh, chore, I think. Sure. See, I, f I feel bad because he should have been able to do things. Josh Cena is awesome. Um, okay. Well, now I shouted in your ear, so uh, I got you. Okay, a couple more um, renovate ones. SWC Core sent last week. Okay, this looks good. I'll just merge that. I don't feel a need to share these out on social media. I don't think it's particularly exciting for people to see second and third 
merge to renovate things. Oh, I love getting that queue down. Uh, we're uh, down to 50. That's only two pages. If you look at the, look at the, the, the bottom. Yay. Awesome. I, um, so all of these now I clicked the update branch so they, why is this not checking out? Ugh. do we need to clear cash or something? We run jobs. I, I, I don't like this. So our CI ugh. watch in real time is an open source maintainer discovers that their CI is busted. Ugh. That's so upsetting. Um, all right. I think we have an issue somewhere. Um, well, I'm going to just keep reviewing PRs because I don't want to leave them hanging if they need feedback for too long. Some of these are a few weeks old. So let's go on to this thing. What's the status here? Uh, fix, yes, some plugin, class methods, use this, detect problematic case for private protected members. Ah, here it is. Um, so there is a backing issue. Um, got it. So, um, what happened was they filed an issue three weeks ago and then sent a PR, um, convert but the issue was never accepted. We're still waiting on discussion. So converting to draft. Interesting message in the chat. Uh, since the backing issue, since the linked issue hasn't been accepted yet. Uh, let's continue conversation there. So convert to draft. Alrighty. Professor Dumbledore, sir, is planning to start a CS class, and oh, I always forget what these all stand for. Owl is ordinary wizarding exams. What is Newt? Harry Potter. What is Newt? Nastily exhausting wizarding test. That's right. Apparently, releasing eighteen-year-olds in the wild with no marketable skill and a tree branch is not necessarily the best idea. Who knew? I mean, young adult fiction, man. Wild, wild stuff happens. All right, so this one I actually might have things to do here. No one's looked at it, oops. Uh, false positive when no unchecked index access and branded screen, screen key, dear God. This is gonna be a whole thing. Uh, oh boy. Lady Blue Notes, thank you for subscribing. I also following earlier, appreciate it. Oh God, infinite loops and use effect. What a nightmare. Sorry to hear that, Emma. Okay, this uh, this should be a fun little uh, review while our CIs are broken in the background. Um, our PR review, yay. Interest, PR review, yay. And interesting bug around now what necessary. Ooh, excuse me. And branded strings. Is that what it is? And so what is it? Computed member access. This might get deep. Deep. All right. Also, let me just check my calendar. Make sure I, I've got time. Yep, I got nothing going on today until Philly JS. So. Yay for me. All right, what is happening? What is the 411? Here's the backing issue pinned in the chat. Um, I like just skipping to the playground some of the time. Oh boy. Um, so this is a, this is a strategy some folks take in TypeScript. Um, they'll brand something, meaning they'll say, okay, I have strings that are that I don't want to just interchange with regular old strings. Uh, no, Hunted Hagrid, you're good. Hunting Hagrid, not hunted. You're the hunter. Uh, you're fine. 
I, I I figured you were joking. I didn't think there was an actual, you know, serious, serious real life question. Uh, yeah. So people will say, okay, I have a string or number or something. And I don't want to be able to just assign any old ones. I say I'm only allowed to use a specific set of them. So now um, this like B variable is a branded key. So you can't do like, you can't do like B equals aha. You would have to do B equals like something else. That's a branded key. Um, useful if you have like special magical strings that can't, you know, that have to be only ever those special magical ones. Okay, but now we're saying unnecessary optional chained on a non knowledge value. Ho! Oh. What type is this though? Const what equals this. So what is type inner object or undefined? But our rule is saying, no, you silly goose, unnecessary optional chain on a non knowledge value is a uh, strict null checks is true and no unchecked indexed access. Oh. Okay, so um, no unchecked index access says you need to check whether um, something exists for it to be not undefined when you do index lookups. Okay, so YF Yang, oh, I've been forgetting to check it before on Twitter, whoops. Uh, really interesting. So. I love it when people do this, by the way, not necessary, but just a nice thing. If you have the time and deep knowledge to like show us the deep dive into the source code. So if we go to type your PS lint, where's my cursor? Get check out me, get pull up to the main push yarn releases, whatever. All right, so no unnecessary condition. Jeez, what a large rule. Um, we get the type name from checker and property type, or it's a TS type, and type name is a string. Um, if it if it is a string, um, then we get string. If it is a uh, type parameter, we do something around the type parameter declaration, whatever. We can ignore that. That's not relevant here. If it's a union and every, all the things are strings, string. Intersection, all the things are things. If intersection, everything is a string, string. Okay. So um, if we were to, I'm just like trying to step through the process that the folks here did. Um, what is inner object? Okay. Um, boop. So if I were to know unnecessary condition, test TS valid, add a new test case for this. A divorced fork, what is that? Tell me, what what is that name? I'm curious. Also, welcome. Hello, welcome. Thanks for coming. Welcome. Uh, parser options, if we... I don't know why this one disabled our experimental shenanigan. Um, so I'm, what I'm gonna do is only true. Spoon left, knife stabbed me in the back. All I wanted was a spork. Okay, good to know. Thank you for that information. Oh no, why can't I be built? Why is everything broken today? First our CI broke. <gasps> Maybe this is the same issue as CI that broke. Logs can be found here. What's going on? Ah, cannot find name util. There it is. So here's what happened. Um, merge conflicts. Anthony Fu, a very nice individual from uh, the next side, uh, merged a, or sent a PR that we merged that refactored. So instead of saying import star as util, we import things as named. And then I merged things that, uh, use the old style without updating from main. So now I should be able to fix build. Get add this, get commit. And actually, let me just make sure builds are fixed. Also, it's been uh, a little over 30 minutes, so I should introduce myself again. Hey, y'all. I'm Josh. Thanks for coming on. 
I work on, among other open source projects, uh, TypeScript ESLint, the tool that lets you run ESLint Pretty or other standard JavaScript tools on your TypeScript code. It's a good time. Uh, this is my stream where I go through open source work on this project and others. If you have any questions about TypeScript, open source, programming, development, life, whatever, always happy to chat. Let me know if what I'm doing is not zoomed in enough or too slow or just vague and not described or explained. Always happy to, to talk more. Right now, I'm uh, I'm going through the TypeScript ESLint um, pull request queue because we've got quite a few PRs, about 50. And uh, also just apparently fixed a build break that I uh, introduced. So it came in, uh, uh, build, fix, um, fix, merge, post, merge, break, and no unsafe return TS. How do I get paid in open source? Great question. Um, it's been a while since I, fudge, still have to update that. Uh, it's been a while since I posted a breakdown of my finances a minute or two. Probably do it in a few months. Um, it's a few different revenue sources. Um, I have a personal GitHub sponsors, which, by the way, do I have a little stream elements? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can sponsor me personally on GitHub. I get a few hundred bucks a month from that. You can sponsor TypeScript ES Lint. I get a little under 1500 a month from that. My share, I'm not the only maintainer. Um, I also wrote a book. Is it Bang Book? I always forget. Yeah, Learning TypeScript. Uh, buy it today. My favorite book for learning TypeScript, if you don't know any JavaScript. Sorry, if you don't know anything other than JavaScript. JavaScript is a soft prerequisite. You can read the book without JS, but it'll be a hard time. Yeah, so that's about it. <laughs> you know, it's also been a while since I've had fudge. Now I'm craving it. Anyway, since I apparently fixed the uh, build break, I'm going to go through all these PRs and uh, update them from Maine again. Hooray. GitHub is used to it by now. Uh, spam in there, CI builds. So crowdsourcing funds, affiliates, donos, donations. Um, yeah, I don't do any affiliate stuff. Um, I, I think there are two kinds of internet influencers, like people with following. There are accidental ones like me where I'm not here to be an influencer. It's not a, a purpose. I'd give like talks and stuff, but it's, it's not for influencing in the like Instagram sense. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to... I don't want to stand by what I just said. I'm still trying to figure out the phrasing here because there are people who like are, and this is no shade to either side. There are people who are like actual dev influencers, like dev advocates, avocados, whatever they call themselves. The terms keep changing. Um, and like, that's part of the career. My primary objective is to work on open source. And then the influencing stuff, influencing stuff is like a side effect of that. Um, yeah. People like Theo. Yeah, Theo Brown. Like Theo's a interesting example because I can't tell how what percentage, and that's t3.dg, uh, the ping guy. I can't tell what percentage of his day to day is um, uh, the influencing. I know it's a high percentage, but yeah, like I don't release like the YouTube thumbnails or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, I am like an influencer in the sense of I influence people and I give talks that I think are convincing. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I get donations, crowdsourcing, the occasional contract work. There's a company I really want to work with, which is rare. Like, even for companies I really want to work with, I don't often work with them because it takes away time from open source. Um, what got me into open source? I kind of fell into it. Um, my first big project was in uh, university. It was something called Full Screen Mario. It went viral and got taken down by Nintendo, which was a lot of fun. Uh, but I just put it on GitHub because you know, free, free source you know, code hosting with history. Like get that that was nice, um, yeah that was a good time. But then I what like actually got me into open source like intentionally rather than now people are filing issues on my repository for some reason is I really like static analysis like linters. Um, Full screen Mario's code was crap and at the time TS lint is what I think I first started using and TypeScript it was just really helpful for cleaning up. Maybe I started with ES lint. I forget at this point. Um, so I just kept doing more and more with like TS Lint and all that ecosystem. Sorry, I don't know if I'm actually answering your questions, but uh, let me know if I am or am not. Uh, I'm also just really amused by this build break thing. Also, this freaking GitHub UI, like I know they're in some kind of transitory state, like vaguely halfway between server 
uh rendered and client rendered but uh hey. is it still broken surely it's not still broken what uh let's see did i get the latest merge in there yarn lock okay maybe it's not the latest does it still need no it's the lit github CI broke. Um, taking down my Nintendo is a uh, badge of honor. I agree. I'm really proud of that. <laughs> I guess CI is still broken. Oh, well. Uh, maybe it's a caching thing. Who knows? Um, did I work a normal job before going open source? Corporate. Yeah. Yeah. I worked at Microsoft for just over three years. Um, three and a half years? How long was it? Started in, um, yeah, just over three years. Mid-2015 to end of twenty. 18 and then code academy for slightly over three years like three years in a month, week or two um which is great advice honestly or a great strategy to take like you learn a lot and you make much more money in corporate than open source like right now i earn roughly new york city minimum wage a little bit more on average back then i earned like you know six figures stocks my own health insurance instead of my spouse's much nicer good questions um Annoyed about the CI thing, but oh well. What are you gonna do? Uh, CD packages, ESLint plugin, yarn just no unnecessary condition watch. So this is complaining about um, formatting. So fix all auto fix. Oh, there we go. Um, so this code should be valid. Oh, should it? Huh. Okay. Um, yep, yep, yep. And um, if I put a, ooh, excuse me, if I put a breakpoint on the const type name, but how do I say this? Vagorge? 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 Uh, <laughs> great question. Why take the huge pay cut? It's not as bad of a pay cut as one might think, I think, because it is a really good long-term investment in my um, in myself. Like if I do go back to corporate jobs, I would be probably earning much more due to my deep expertise in open source by much better network connections and so on but it's because that's what i want to do like this makes me happy um one of my big drives is like i want to improve the tech industry i think that software developers are super overpaid in part not uh, there are a few reasons um the entry funnel is crap like a lot of high schools elementary schools don't teach coding they should um diversity inclusion as a whole kind of subpar to put it very nicely um <laughs> way too nicely and but also like we're, we're inefficient you know like we're constantly making bugs and like doing bad practices so it's nice to i don't know it's nice to to make us a little more efficient aha so this is what's happening the type uh the types flags are um it doesn't have type dot flags and ts flag string like because the type is um, we can ignore the, most of this, but if you look at types, the property, it's an array. So it, this is an intersection type. If you do a type dot checker dot type to string type, we see that it is branded key, the type. Um, do I see myself doing this long term? Yeah. I don't know how long. I don't like to plan longer than a year, but yeah. Um, uh, th thank you, Nico Zwanzo. I appreciate it. Um, I feel like it'd be hard getting back to the corporate world after doing open source freelance. Yeah, no, divorce is right. One of the big benefits of this is that I have a lot of freedom. I go to a lot of conferences because I don't have like a, you know, a schedule, a team, whatever manager to hold me accountable to time. Um, and I get to choose what I want to do, which is really nice. But there are also downsides. Like I miss having a manager, a mentor, mentees, consistent team and product around me. Yeah. So such is life. Anyway, um, back to this. So what's happening here is that get type name doesn't recognize that this is a string. Um, so the um, is type intersection true? I would think yes. Type dot types dot map value get type name sum is string. Oh wait no, so it is it is a string. It is returning string here. 
and checker dot get index info of type oh object type checker dot type two strings by the way it's been a little while since oh yeah i posted just reposting i think it's pinned in the chat this is what i'm looking at now uh obj type why is the object type undefined that's so interesting what is obj type though what is this is nullable property type so in trying to figure out um a dot outer question mark um looks like this is giving back the type of undefined in our code somehow whoa why is this yelling hold what's my option b um start ESLint server shut up ESLint. All right, type and property type. Where does type come from? Oh, previous types, get constraint type of locations, no dot object, right. So um, no dot object is the member expression from 241 to 248. I'm looking at the selected on the bottom to see where those are. So that's 241 to 248 so that's this is the uh, no dot object and then the property being looked up is 251 to 252 that's this did i learn typescript or javascript first javascript first um not before typescript existed i learned it actually about the same time that typescript was released publicly but it took me a few years to get onto TypeScript. Um, I'm not huge on adopting super early cutting edge stuff in tech because, uh, you know, the earlier something is, the less iterated on, the less polished it is. So I waited a little bit, you know, just to, just to let things get a little more user friendly on my end. All right, so the type uh, of... Oh, I see, so prev type is is it available in the scope of course it's not uh here we go is record of branded key or inner object or undefined so if we do prev type dot types dot map t checker t checker type to string t we see okay so first we're seeing the undefined option type for prev type um Got it. So the issue is um, the issue is that a dot outer is the union type. It could be or outer question. A dot outer right here could be the record of brand key or inner object or undefined. Got it. I feel like I'm caught up on this issue now. Speaking of which, I should actually go see like whatever they're doing. All right, so how are they fixing this? <laughs> Before I try to fix this on my own, let me just like see what are they doing. Um, get index infos of. T oh my god, is, is that it? I didn't know that was an API. Uh, <laughs> get index infos of type. What is what is this? PHPR checkout seven seven zero six. Oh, I gotta reset my changes. Nice, so it index infos of type, which returns an array of key type, type is read only, and optional declaration. Look at that. That's really useful, actually. That's better than what we were doing. So look at this. They reduced the amount of code by using a better TypeScript API, and they added some uh, valid test cases. Nice. The only thing is, um, they didn't uh, add any invalid test cases, no new failures. So I'm wondering, I feel like we should, we should add some, Ooh, what got me into tooling? I, I really like it. I don't know. Um, 
I found that every time I work on something, I get into the thing itself, like how to use that optimally, most effectively. Um, so when I was working in corporate at Microsoft and at Code Academy, I kept on like wanting to work on the platform side of whatever I was doing. Like uh, we were on a team that at Microsoft wasn't on React, so I was really excited about the effort to rewrite the product or migrate to React. Um, at Codecademy, I started on the product side and then kept working on things like the TypeScript conversion and becoming accessible. So I just helped form the web platform team and worked on there for a while. Like that's the stuff that's always really appealed to me. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is um, add a test case for th this stuff. Um, Yeah. Uh, errors. Let's let's add an arbitrary error here. Error. Negative one. What got you to tooling, Lady Blue Notes? Out of curiosity. Oh no! Why is this complaining? Oh, don't need the squigglies. Fix. Oh, you're not there yet. Should I ask for docs or? Uh, some such. Ooh. What do we mean by tool? Like, great question. Thank you for asking. Um, also, first time chat. Hi, welcome. Uh, thanks for the follow. You and Lucas Mouse. Um, like the the tools that developers use. Um, thanks to Bruce Fork. Like uh, right now, I'm working on TypeScript ES Lint. We provide a bunch of Lint rules, among other things. And those lint rules run on code if you want them to and you know, let you know if something's off. So that's useful. That's like dev tooling. Like instead of making the coffee at the coffee shop, I'm working on the coffee machine to make sure that it's clean and, you know, smoothly running. So, okay. Foo is foo. Yeah, you know what? I can't think of invalid cases for this. Um, the only thing is, though, um, the issue... Now that I'm looking at this code, uh, yeah, yeah, like the test runner. Like who writes Jest or Vtest or Mocha or whatnot? All these different JavaScript test frameworks. Um, so I'm going to hide these as off topic, actually, because. Ba -ba -ba. They're, they're showing up. <sighs> because moving into tech was a hurdle because of the terminology, how Lady Blue Nose got into tech, and I wanted to figure out a way to make it more accessible for me, which ended up with me questioning how it was working for everyone. Yeah, that's 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 how that goes for a lot of folks. That's funny. Yeah. Hide off top. Yeah, that makes sense. I think a lot of docs people are of the sort where like they like the docs work, they're good at it, but also because what well, part of what makes them good at it, and tell me if this does or doesn't apply to you, is that they have like that deep understanding of this stuff. Um, like Astro, for example, like writing docs for it is great, but like also knowing it, like that makes you excited to work on it, I would assume. Okay, so do they have, is this just like a way simpler reproduction? Nice. So simpler repro here. And uh oop, boop, boop. Doesn't uh complain there can't see thing or null. Parsing error. No. See question dots. And necessary. Yep. So this, the, the, yep. Simpler repro. Do we even need no unchecked index access? Aha. Uh -huh. So, um, all right. These, the associated issue or the linked issue runs with um, no unchecked index access. 
Oh, jeez, what is the name of this dang thing? <sighs> Excuse me. But these unadded valid cases don't exercise. Could you enable it for them, please? Playground showing lint failure, false reports with the uh, boot on and then no false. Yeah, so, uh, oh wait, hang on, if I, okay, so this is playground with it on. Then if I turn it off and then go back, are there still complaints? Oh, okay, never mind. We're good. Um, for at least, could you add a couple of tests with it on, please? No, it's probably not um, impactful here, but just in case. Nice tell about this API. Cool. That's great. Thanks. Just requesting a bit more tests. Whew, that took longer than I wanted it to. What a deep, intricate issue. That was fun. And waiting for review. Or waiting response. Whew, fun. Also because I it's been more than 20 minutes and my auto 20 minute issue pin expired. That is the PR I just worked on. Did I even post this online? I think I did. Yes. Okay. <sighs> All right. Um, for read only private field support. Oh yeah, no, that's, that's not my list. Um, Nova requires no require imports. Oh yeah, this, this, I, posted um, to other Josh. Uh, so that's just a waiting response. All right, sure, move NX cache to dot cache. Uh, okay, so waiting for author, James says needs further investigation. James is working on some of our build shenanigans. All right, look at this. Um, I'm a, uh, Oop, I have one last one from an old repeat contributor, HyperUp call, and then I can start to look at the CI issues. 26 hours a day, accurate. You know, I, I try to limit it to eight hours a day on average. Um, but I also really like what I do. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I, I guess I'll just work a little more. You know, everyone else is asleep. I've got nothing to do. There was this one issue that was bugging me. Yeah. Um, are we waiting for changes at all? Nope, no one's reviewed this. Awesome. Um, last PR in the queue before I start looking at CI issues. Cypher call on the Twitters. Ah, but they are on Mastodon. Edwin. Uh, nice little, I don't want to say little, what is, what, what, what is this? What are we looking at? Uh, nice little, nice cleanup for an is CTY check in our, what is it? Underlying TypeScript ES tree package. Blue sky. Um, for what the fucking. Ah, nice. Jesus. Elk? Anyone here work on elk? You have issues. Uh, something to do with emojis. Dat boy for twenty. Will I be seeing you? We have a uh, Philly JS today. Chrissy, Seabed, hello. How y'all doing? Thanks for coming by. Elk, where? Yeah, you see, I, I, I had the, uh, I tried to paste, and then these emojis kept coming in. Very weird. Melting face emoji seems to be an issue. Uh, that's Elk is my Mastodon client. Okay, Elk that's zone. All right, um, nice cleanup from 
hyper up call at tech LGBT. I, I, what, did I, what did I call this? For blah, blah, blah. Maintainer duties. That's fun. How's your Hacktoberfest going? And yeah, Lady Blue Notes. I always forget, like, wait, I've been here for like ages. Like, I. It's been more than a decade that I've been doing tech stuff. It's wild. Like, I still remember. Oh. Not on Twitter. Uh, nice cleanup. Um, like, I still remember being a college kid thinking, like, oh, this sucks. I, I'm terrible at this. I'll never get a job. Like, that. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to fail. That was a common refrain in my head. All right. Uh, so what's what's this uh, what's this backing issue and pull request posted and pinned? Oh, I already pinned it. Okay. Skip the as TTY check for printing the supported TypeScript versions message if the user passes in the logger function. Okay. So in TypeScript ES tree, which I will uh, get up. Thanks. Congrats. Do we don't have shirts this year? Uh, no, THPR checkout 3506. No, that's the issue. 7739. Uh, actually, let's check out main. So in source parser TS under type GPS tree um, is TTY. Where is this? Okay, so the code must have moved. Okay, yeah, we moved it to a separate function. Um, you're currently running a version of TypeScript that's not officially supported. It might work, it might not, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we, um, we only log this if there's an is TTY, um, meaning, uh, oh, what is TTY? What is TTY? Uh, Linux. Devices that enable typing. Okay, uh, I don't remember how this came to be, but yeah, STTY is like the, are uh, you basically running in a terminal, essentially, give or take, like a human terminal rather than like a CI build terminal. Um, so the initial issue over two years ago was, hey, this is annoying for us for XYZ reasons. Can we remove this check? But no, we actually do it because we don't want to log in certain situations. So yeah. Um, so if someone passes a logger FN, then that disables the STTY heuristic. Fun fact, you can pass a logger in parse settings dot log log. Uh, so, um, yeah. So if someone passes a, uh, a past logger FN, then, um, then we can, um, always log this thing. If that makes sense. Uh, let's go back to the PR branch. So what they did was, let's just take a look at the code. Warn about TS version, find all references. All right, so parse settings and past logger FN. Up, up, uh. So yeah, the pass logger FN is a Boolean indicating whether they passed one. Now we say in warn about TS version, if we were passed, <sighs> I feel like, um, I feel like we could just simplify it a little bit. Or type of process is not equal to undefined and process.std out is tty. Uh, then we log. Yeah, it simplifies it a bit. So I'm just gonna suggest boop, boop, boop. Nope, that's not the right range. It's from here down to here. Think so. You know, the picking could reduce a bit of code here. Thoughts? All right. So why? So they move the STTY check 
down because it's not always needed. Um, cool. Yeah, it's moved from here down to... Wait a second. We don't need to do all this stuff. Um, so I would say, let's put this all uh, here. Oh, and not initialize the variables if we don't need. That's so like here would be constporter equals whatever, const version warning equals. Yeah. Um, okay, so before I move on to the test, one last note is like, you can do this just to reduce nesting. So, nope, nope, nope. Oh, I hate accidentally clicking buttons. No, 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 no. All right totally optional but also we could uh this function could i also kind of like reducing nesting of the function this is all nip picking by starting off with no worries if you hate it and don't Okay, so that file's good. And create parse settings is good. It's just the little addition. So now we have one and one supported version TS test. Why is this doing its thing this way? Um, so previously we were importing parser and we previously had we let me switch back. We previously had two tests. Uh, okay, yeah, I like how they're doing now, where each test the parser is uh, imported. Um, we don't support ESM imports of local code yet. CD packages, TypeScript, ES tree, yarn, jest, warn. Um, hmm. Do we need the TS in there? We don't generally use the TS extensions. Um, ba -ba -ba. It, we don't generally use the TS extensions, even if they are supported in the testing framework. No need. What's the error actually? Oh boy. Ugh. God, this whole shebang. ES modules. Yeah, this is fine as is. Um, eh, confirming that trying to add the explicit .js in gives the unfortunate TypeScript complaint that uh, unfortunate test complaints the file can't be found. Yeah, so that's fun. Um, This looks fine to me otherwise. Um, Semver.satisfies is just.mock. Is this uh, 
Is this how it was before? Yeah, this is what we were doing before. Great. Great, thanks. Nice to see this three plus year old issue resolved. Just a few nitpicks from my end, because they're not. Oops, I hit caps lock. Major, I'm blocking at all. And just touch them up before merging. I'm trying to get better at always posting. Say. <laughs> Cartoon pickles smiling and lifting up. A top hat up and down. Caption. Thank you. Is that the caption? Thanks. All right. If only the CI were passing, then I'd be able to merge immediately. Unfortunately, it's not passing. Also, how did I get 20? I don't know why 22 people are here, but thanks y'all for coming. Um, I just, I think I got through this is the last of the PR review queue that I needed to get through. Um, I'm not done. I'm not, I'm not signing off. Um, do I have a copy of the slides for my talk, Liberty JS? Yes, I do, actually. JoshyHolder.com speaking. I put everything there. Liberty JS, building design system in mid flight. It was nice seeing you there. That boy 420. I refuse to call you by any real name like Graham or whatnot. That boy 420 is one of the greatest names I've ever seen. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually take a quick ad break, get myself water, put on some pants, and then I'm going to deep dive into CI stuff. No worries if y'all don't want to see a deep dive into CI build breaks or whatever, but uh, hope, hope to see you when, when you're back. Bye. Ad break. How do I turn off the display? Uh, where is it? Ad break. There we go. All righty, and I'm back. Thank you, Dapboy420, for, for the sub, the subscription. Oh yeah, also shout out Chrissy and the open sauced project. Great stuff. The ad break didn't work. You might be a subscriber. If so, thank you. If not, oh well, I guess I won't get the 25 cents or whatever it would have got me. Actually, wait. It might have been. It might be more than that now. A couple dozen viewers. Anyway, a little intro, and then I will start again. Hey everyone, I'm Josh. I'm a full-time open-source maintainer in the TypeScript ecosystem. A bunch of people here in the chat also do. Op <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oof. A bunch of people here in the chat are also open source So ask us anything you want. We'll try to answer. I'm dying. Over here, um, one of the main projects I work on, TypeScript PS Lint, our CI builds a Rogan, so I'm going to investigate that. Let's do this. I'll try not to die. No, no guarantees. Gotten close before. Um, oh well, would would you look at this? The uh, CI is um, 
working. So actually, before I do that, let me just, I'm just going to apply the changes that I wanted to. <laughs> no more on Uh, yeah, not <laughs> sign of a true developer priority here. Uh, the process is undefined and process. Wee. Little nitpicking. Oh wait, I should uh, make sure the tests still pass. Yep, yep, yep. Not before the CI is fixed. Uh, little nitpicks, don't mind me. Question on open source etiquette. If I want to take on an issue, should I just claim it if no one else has or ask first? Great question. Depends on the repo. Most repositories will um, actually, some, I should say, not most, some repositories will say in their um, contributing guide, uh, in TypeScript ES lints on our guide under contributing issues, we have a whole section of this. We don't personally use any issue um, claiming system. Fun fact, there's a term for this, licked cookie. From an old Microsoft blog from a Microsoft incredible person, Raymond Chen, great blogger, great, great mind. Um, some some repos do uh if they don't say in their docs that's like their contributing islands actually good good issue to file on them hey can you please document this uh i personally don't i personally just go for it uh too many licked cookies out there but cool okay so oh oh my the ranch is not ah you're right it's not. Uh, if you could make them or grant me access, make them explicit, decline them or grant me access, that'd be great. Thanks. Otherwise, no worries. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, all these PRs pull requests with no place to go. Um, who, excuse me. Uh, let's just take a look at an arbitrary one. Probably gonna have to file an issue here. See if we have one on, we have a category on our issues, a label issue maintenance. Oh, I thought this was accepting PRs. Okay, never mind. Um, hmm. Here's a fun one. I removed end-to-end -end tests. Uh, I removed the end-to-end -end tests in playwright remove play. Yeah. So fun fact: we had end-to-end -end tests because when we were first working on the big, the most recent website overhaul, whatever it was a year ago. Um, I wanted to add accessibility into end test and make sure it still ran. And then they got flaky over time, even after switching like the way that we run tests, like the test harness and uh, doing a whole bunch of stuff. It just wasn't work it, worth it. Like we don't we don't do much with the the tests. So uh, with the website anymore. So it wasn't really a need. Oh yeah, I uh, plus one to what Lady Blue Note said. I feel like I have to add an excessive amount of emojis on my messages for fear people think I'm mad if I don't. Same, I have that fear also. I mean, it's hard because um, or lols, yeah, because uh, it's the internet. Like people don't know your context. I've constantly seen people like misinterpret. Like I had a Twitter thread with one particularly angry individual. I hundred percent think they're at fault for this, but like, what are you gonna do? It's the internet uh, where. Um, I said like, Hey, what you're asking for is not in the reasonable scope of what we're trying to do. And like, they like got upset about this. So like, what are you saying that? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. No, it's just, well, 
Not not documented. Ooh, when I see someone post too many emojis, I feel like they're being condescending. Ooh, yeah. That's tricky. <laughs> There's no right answer here. Yay. Um, ooh, another playwright one. So that's... I'm just... I was trying to see if there was a duplicate issue already filed for um, the fact that things are broken, but... uh. Now I found a few ones I can close out. Nice. Anyway, yeah, didn't, didn't find an issue. Um, propose repository maintenance. What is broken? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Cache not found. Couldn't be built successfully. Okay, what is the actual failure, though? Can I find it? I fixed I pushed to my forks main and not the upstream main. <laughs> yeah. Can you fix? Yeah, I try to use emojis to express the actual emotions I'm feeling. If someone's actual emotion is like three separate instances of amusement in a comment, <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. Whoop. Repo maintenance, bug, accepting PRs. Build failure on util. Cannot find name util. In introduced because I merged a PR to, what was it? Uh, no unsafe return. No unsafe return TS. Oops. Uh, what's the timeline here? Fixed. Uh, oh, come on. Come on. Hover. 7708. Without. Which added in another usage of util. Without merging in the changes from. Uh, b -b -b 766. Nice. Nice. Uh, get, uh, you know, I'm just going to make a PR for this like a good boy. Get, check out the... Uh, also, sorry for the ASMR. I do not condone or recommend these Celsius drinks. My brother actually had like heart thingies because <clears throat> I was having too many of them. So he stopped drinking it, these these Celsius energy drinks and now I have just have a bunch in my fridge. It is convenient. Um, yeah, I'm, he never said addictive, but I'm pretty sure I have my suspicion. Danny, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but I think you had too many Celsius. I, um, yeah, I do not condone energy drinks. I condone if you have the privilege, buying in a nice espresso machine like a Breville Duo Temp Pro or higher and making it at lattes at home with those like ridiculous syrups you get at Marshall Home Goods or equivalent. But, uh, blah. Um, anyway, uh, fix name merge util name merge issue. Builds a uh, chore ESLint plugin. Fix post merge issue around util name. Space import. Fix util name merge issue. You're only supposed to have 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. How much is in this crap? The taste isn't terrible. I don't think. Okay, 200 milligrams per serving. Serve oh, this this is one of the less bad ones. Uh, this only has... um. Half your daily intake of caffeine. That's not bad. You just had a NOS energy drink and you're tweaking. Yeah, that sounds like that would happen. <laughs> like for the first time in months. Amused. Oh my god, Allison, I love that you know that off the top of your head. It's like, oh yeah, that's that's exactly 200. Uh... <laughs> I sent uh, switches the namespace 
old namespace import style to a named one. You have like three copies a day. Is that too much? Uh, for <laughs> is Adelson an LLM? Uh, what is math? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many. What I've I for a while I was off caffeine for the most part. Not totally, but I try not to have it. I don't like being dependent on things. I don't like the idea that I have to drink it in order to be productive or like have to use a thing. But. It is really useful, and I love coffee. So, um, yeah, nowadays I'll have a coffee in the morning, maybe, and a coffee at lunch, maybe. Um, it is literally addictive. So, but like, even if things aren't chemically addictive, most things can become behaviorally addictive. So, I feel less ugh about it than I used to. Um,. Builds broken, lol. Shoot, now I'm tagging hyper up call. Sorry. There's my fix. I can untag. Oh, that was so bad. The lethal dosage of caffeine is actually quite high. I made a LinkedIn post one time about how I could have 50 plus Celsius with my weight before hitting the lethal dose. Huh. Good to know. Expect a shipment of 51. This reminds me of the Cassidy. Anyone, anyone know who Cassidy Williams is in the chat? Y'all know this person? Uh, someone, I think this is on the internet. Someone sent Cassidy like a large amount of cheese. Uh... Does anyone remember this? This was like a whole thing. <laughs> caffeine powder. Yeah, that shit scares me. Bruno B. Mello. Luckily, caffeine never got to the point with me, even though I love coffee. Sometimes I go a full two weeks without thinking about drinking and go, oh, right, I'll make a nice espresso. I'm so jealous of your physical slash mental ability to do that. That's so nice. Ugh. Dude, I'm in Philadelphia and uh, Charlie Mack and Dennis, their actors, uh, ugh, they were they were doing a tasting on Sunday and I couldn't go and I was so upset. Um, ugh, it would have been nice. What are their names? It's a uh, Charlie Day, Rob McElhenney, and um, Glenn Howerton, I should say. I should call them by their actual names, not their actors or their characters. Um, but I wanted to take a bag of spaghetti to Charlie Day. That's been like a dream of mine for the longest time. Um, for those who don't know, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, great show. There's a character, Charlie, who loves cheese. And at one point, they try to take him on a spa day. And he's like, what, what is spa? Is this short for spaghetti? So he just brings like a bag of spaghetti with him. Yeah. Ugh. Charlie Day fan spaghetti. Bag. Do people do this? Do people, do people give him bags of spaghetti? I feel like this is a thing. People do. Eh, just. Oh, well. Just photos of him with it in the show. All right. So I'm pretty confident that this PR is good to go i don't really want to wait but in the meantime i can check my notifications i saw some other stuff come in um an hour ago oh boy let's triage this new issue is charlie day the dude who voiced luigi yeah i did not particularly like um mario's voice what's his face chris pratt but uh i really liked charlie day's voicing i like charlie day a lot um, let me, how do I twitch? Style shit, welcome. I think I saw your, uh, your icon on the uh, notifications list. While that's building, time to triage some more issues. PRs. First up, what am I looking at here? It's JBS Marcus on Twitter. Nice. 
Love and Enum Bug. One of the most bug dense features in TypeScript for us. All right. Um, what am I doing? Boop, boop, boop. And issue on further we don't have here. And, whoa, that's a mouthful. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Four thousand milligrams of caffeine in the morning drink. I feel like it would just taste terrible at that point. Ugh. Um, what is happening? Prefer enum literal thingy. Oh God, it's from. <laughs> we literally have a bug on something from the TypeScript handbook. That's unfortunate. Explicit enum value must only be a literal value, string, number, boolean, etc. Do we have an option for this yet? We allow bitwise expressions. Uh, did someone not read the... Oh, ha, ha. Allow bitwise expressions. Okay, so they did read the docs. I'm just being a jerk. Uh, allow bitwise expressions is already true here. That's right. It's in the title. Right? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was self enum you know, just not disabled. Um, I think this this is a valid bug. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, this makes sense to me. That it's it. This should be allowed. It's like literally in their docs. Oh, look at this! Two thumbs ups. Once in a while, this happens. Always curious about this. Always aside, I'm always curious about this. When an issue is filed and within an hour, a, a few, there is greater than one upvote. Is there a Twitch stream or meetup or something? Not complaining, just a happy, honestly, more happy than anything. that folks are getting involved in the issue tracker. Makes sense. I think as long as the... Hmm. What if it's a dynamic value? Other equals three. Uh, or like, uh, whatever, read equals my read, write equals my writes. What if it's dynamic? Const my read equals math.random, const my write equals one plus two. Are these allowed? Must only be literal value, string, number, boolean, etc. Yeah, so as long as it's... Oh, thanks, Bruno. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah, no, there you are. Okay, I was like, wait, are you one of the two? Uh, screenshots of two reactions. I think as long as the values refer to a previous value in the enum, then we're okay. It should be allowed. I should update the screenshot. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Let's, let's uh, get there. Bruno, you're a... Uh... Well, no, because it, it'd be lying because Bruno is one of the three. LOL. Yep. Accepting. Hmm. I'm also thinking... Yeah, no, right. Fine, fine, fine. Good, good, good. How's my little build failure doing? How do I emoji so fast? Great question. I have a, a great deep and integrated love for emojis. Um, first of all, in GitHub, I do the colon thing. And I've just kind of memorized like, okay, plus one is thumbs up. Same as how like people memorize Vim commands or like video game, you know, combo, shortcut, whatevers. Uh, 
Then also I have like the Mac emoji keyboard, which is command Apple key space on this like Windows keyboard I'm using. No, I said uh, Emacs actually. That boy. I, I, it's been quite a few years since I used Vim, but I used to like it. Too pro for me. Also, uh, I really want to get this merged so I can get to all these PRs. Uh, most of the lynching is done. Why the heck is install taking three minutes, two and a half, three minutes? I don't know. James is looking into it, I think. Almost there, almost there. God, your emojis. I actually, um, fun fact for anyone who maintains any websites, um, I have this really cool project that I like called Emoji Explosion, uh, which also has plugins to integrate it with the Konami code. So on my keyboard, I'm typing up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. Look at that freaking thing. Ah, makes me so happy. Fun fact, this website was actually made by a friend of a friend. Now I guess friend, Carly. Uh, but uh, I have Emoji Explosion set up on like basically every website that I've touched in the last few years. Uh, <laughs> oh man, it's, why is it finally out of bounds? That's not good. Um, including, fun fact, uh, Code Academy, which has, uh, <laughs> up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA. Look at that. <laughs> Shut up, ad. So uh, emoji explosion, not dev for the curious. Anyway. Um, I'm going to silence these three notifications. Um, oh boy, style shit. There you are. Um, another emoji issue. This emoji, <laughs> enum issue. This one from style shit. You're on Twitter, right? I've seen you. What is the issue? This one, on uh, some cases, not being covered. Great. Are you on the Mastodon style shit? I haven't seen you there. Ooh, let me know if I'm wrong. Is that animation? Okay, nope, good. Is that animation done in JavaScript or CSS? A uh, mix of both, as much CSS as possible. Um, I believe, uh, in theory, one could use CSS to like transition everything, but um, I'm actually, when I have time, which is almost never, uh, working on adding like drag and drop support for mice. So uh, again, in theory, one could do CSS things. In practice, it's just been easier to like have a tick timer that like updates the position every few milliseconds. And then uh, it uses CSS transitions to like have a smooth transform. So like the way it actually works, um, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, debugger, is if you look at each of these elements, they're positioned with a transition and a transform. Um, so that's cool. Also, I think I need to update the library. I'm pretty sure I removed the ARIA label in the latest version. Oh no, it's roll image, aria labels, random emoji. Hmm. I want to say I have a change on the laptop somewhere to change it to the actual emoji. Anyway. Yeah, it, I haven't seen performance issues um, on Chrome. I've seen them, I think, in Firefox. So if anyone has any uh, idea how to make it less buggy on Firefox, hit me up. You can tell the caffeine from this stupid energy drink is starting to kick in because I'm like all over the place now. All right. Switch exhaustive, exhaustiveness check. Some cases for member names are not covered. Oh boy. Look at that little scroll bar bug in Monaco and or Chrome. Switch is not exhaustive. Type of what the fudge? <laughs> Why are you doing this to us? Did you see this in the tests for another thing? Uh, oh boy. <laughs> Look at that. That's nice. That's a nice find. All right. So, um, so the issue is uh, computed member names, right? Where was that pull request? 
there was a PR recently that did stuff around. Was this was this your pull request? I saw one recently that had similar issues around. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Love it. Let's not introduce new bugs here, and anything existing can be uh, tackled there. No strong preference from me on. Yeah, yeah. So as long as this PR doesn't introduce new bugs, then yay. And thanks for filing, by the way. Good on you. Good, uh, you know, thorough open sourcing. Oh my god, this is this is really funny. Really, really amusing. Nice spot. Thanks for the fo following. Uh, investigating this thoroughly from 7691. Yeah. Bug. Accepting PRs. Nice find. That, I love a bug. I love a bug that messes up everything. Look at all these. Look at all these reds. Horrible. Horrible. Love to see it. All right. Ooh, Josh Cena on this thing. I think the difference there is that read-only array is a built-in dedicated array type, whereas read-only, for me at least, is general. Okay. Don't need to go too deep into that because we've already looked at it. <gasps> the build basically passed. We're just running a few more unit test things. But, uh... I feel good about merging this thing. I, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Yay. Look at that. All right. All right. So now that this is merged, almost back down to 50 pull requests. Ugh. Inshallah, end of the year, we'll have like one page of PRs, like 25 at most, and maybe like 250 issues. Wouldn't that be nice? Um... So this is fixed. So now I can, uh, I'll save that for the end. I can go back through and update all these <sighs> renovate PRs, updates. By the way, this is like peak open sourcing here. I'm using my keyboard to just quickly go through and run the same whatever keyboard shortcuts in each of them. In this case, I control tabbed to get through all of them and for each one I pressed end on my keyboard to scroll all the way down so that I can position my mouse over update branch and hit update branch on all of them. I had previously been rate throttled by GitHub from going to the UI too quickly like this, but uh, I think what is this half dozen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven PRs. I should be fine. Wait a few seconds, refresh because the pages are getting out of sync. Now they're all the nice yellows. Eight, whatever, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight of them. Nice. All right, so that feels good. Um, do I have another Chrome window? Let's open my notifications. Ooh, ooh. Create TypeScript app. Uh, looks like I commented 30 minutes ago. Did someone comment and delete on these? <laughs> I actually got 429 by Code Academy recently, which is really annoying because I literally helped write the code that 429's people. I wasn't the original author, but like I worked on the feature. 429, by the way, is the like rate limit. Uh, too many requests, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm literally getting paid by your company to write content for you, and you're 429 me automatically. Rude. Okay, yeah, someone uh, might have commented and then deleted it. I don't, did anyone want to see what happened? Cool. Um, I unsubscribed from this thing. Did someone tag me? Uh, yeah, people are just talking about the formatting stuff. And then, oh, yeah. So I've been sending more pull requests to ESLint. I actually need to send them an invoice. I'm starting to work as like a external contributor. Uh, ba, ba, ba. So yeah, one of the things is adding a renovate config. There's discussion from uh, some of the actual core ESLint maintainers. 
and uh really nice the some people from the renovate side apparently the co-creator look at that thank you is that reese arkins Arkins. really nice so yeah i'll just wait for this to settle down before uh taking another look but cool um Oh, and then you read the contributing guidelines. Did you ask to claim the issue? <laughs> By the way, I'm just uh, just going to throw this out there. Don't, please don't tell anyone the secrets that I'm about to show you all. Nice. Gotcha. So um, uh, there is a old, I believe, true story about a band, the Brown M&Ms. You want to hear about this thing? Uh, it's a test that uh, Van Halen used to do where they would demand concert venues give them a bowl of just brown M&Ms. This is similar to the McDonald's someone sued because their coffee was too hot story, where the first reaction is like, that's stupid, Americans are just being silly and spoiled. No, the actual reason why is because they wanted to make sure concert venues thoroughly read their guidelines and documentation, because the ones who didn't were much more likely to have accidents. And when you're a band traveling with a bunch of equipment and doing huge concerts... It's important. So uh, create TypeScript app, GitHub contributing. I added my own equivalent of brown M&Ms, which of course is emoji related. If you made it all the way to the end, dear Bravo, dear user, we love you. Please include your favorite emoji. And you want to know how many people have done this in my repo or in the TypeScript ESLint uh, repo, which also has this same... Um, same thing in its issues yep basically none i think i saw one or two over the last few months plural basically no one reads the contributing guidelines now for types of PS lint it's like kind of understandable because uh they're linked externally so like github won't notify people if the file changes um but still at some point i know there are new contributors who did not read it after we told them to and yeah, it's it's a lot of text, you know. How many how many words is this? It's over three hundred words. Hyper up call, hello. First time, oh wow. Thanks for joining, by the way. Um yeah, you stylish it, everyone. It's okay. I understand. Um I personally barely skim through contributing guidelines. Uh I have personally skimmed through smaller contributing guidelines. So I've probably missed the brown M&Ms or emojis or whatever in other repos. But it does really bring me joy. Because once in a while someone will post the emoji. And ugh. Ugh, I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, it is basically standard across repos. Yeah, it's really just like issue claiming that uh, people... People mess up on ours for the most part. And then, of course, the like they don't read any contributing guidelines and just like don't fill out the issue template. Um, yeah. Anyway, really amusing to me. Uh, what do I... I got no notifications. Uh, let's see if there's anything in the issue review queue for me to look at. Oh, yeah. I got a minus author Joshua Kate Goldberg because... Oops. Goldberg. Um, okay, so this one is uh, James's assigned. He's going to look at it. Bug, no misuse promises, optional chaining void rule. Okay, I think Brad was talking about this. Uh, so, yeah, um, this is an interesting. Actually, I, I want to look at this now. This is really interesting. Um, while the builds are running. By the way, since I see a few contributor names in the chat, first of all, awesome, thank you, shout out. Um, second of all, let me know if I've dropped the ball. I don't, on anything, I don't think I have anything left to review from any of you, but sometimes I miss things and don't catch them for like a month or five. So please let me know. Um, while the uh, half dozen renovate PR builds are running, uh, do, Switching to issue triage for a bit. Um, boop, boop, boop. Really interesting, nuanced, nuanced uh, case of no misused promises and nullish values. And who, who are you, Nikolai? 
No information. Nice hat, though. <laughs> yeah, me getting to something eventually is uh, not always the timetable that some would want. Such is life. Uh, so yeah, um, this is really interesting. We have a rule, no misuse promises, saying don't put a promise or an async function in a place that can't handle that. Like if you have like a uh, function with on click, let's say on click is promise void, and then like you do something with on click, whatever. Uh, and then you pass in with on click, pretending it's like a react or solid or whatever. Um, the fact that this is an async function being passed to a place that just has void return for its function type means you might be missing something. But what if it's uh, what if you're checking whether a promise exists? That's tricky because this is a theoretically valid idea. Like declare const maybe a promise promise void or undefined. So just like simplifying the repro a little bit if maybe a promise so maybe hmm. so yeah uh nikolai posted this uh oh i posted a similar smaller repro so separate issue on no floating promises yeah so uh coming back to this I think it'd be reasonable to add an option to the rule. There are definitely cases where I mean, there are, there are, I can see the use case for folks wanting to check whether um, a nullable promise is uh, truthy or not. But if they are using this, oh, that's right. We have um, we have strict Boolean expressions. That's right. So strict Boolean expressions, like, hey, you try to check. Uh, you try to check something for truthiness, but it, you didn't strictly check whether it's true or false. Like, you passed like string or number or uh, false or something instead of Boolean. That should capture most of the issues. Thoughts. So yeah, I think an opt-in option for the rule uh, should be good enough. Let's let's bump this back to a waiting response. What do y'all think? Have y'all? I'm just curious. Have any of you tried like no misused promises or like our more strict rules. I think they're pretty sweet, but that's just me. I'm a little biased. Uh, p -p -p strict Boolean expressions. Oh, well, once you get get the chance, let me know if you ever do. Right, how are these rules going? <laughs> we have so many PRs that like half of them, I bet like GitHub's like, shut up with, with the pull request. I'm not running your CI all at once we're getting th throttled oh well oh uh, well um is this at least uh still waiting to run well okay all right back to the uh oops that's the typescript -y thing yeah yeah third party code doesn't always do well with promises it's upsetting I think as more people use TypeScript ESLint over time, it'll get better because more folks will build with these rules and the legitimately, I think, best practices they entail in mind. But life is hard. Not everyone does what we want. That's author Joshua K. Goldberg. All right, well, um, I've been here for <laughs> an hour and 59 and a half almost minutes. So I think um, I think this is a good stopping point since you know it's basically <laughs> the ci is done um, i'm gonna actually do a quick ad break again uh use the restroom come back and then if if there are any prs that can be merged or new notifications i'll take a look at those otherwise i'll raid someone so brb and if you're a subscriber well then just enjoy the uh enjoy the blank screen
Thanks. Sorry. Silent movie. By the way, I just set up... I'm curious if anyone's noticed any changes in my audio quality. I just set up, like, noise dampening and then immediately put a uh, Halloween black gauze shroud thingy on top of them. But either or both of them should. And I also fixed my mic a little bit. It's better angle, so I'm hoping the audio quality is better. Um, amused. Anyway, yeah, no, please. I, uh, I sound good. Thanks, Lady Blue Notes. I... I try to always um, ask people, who should I rate at the end? Sometimes I forget to, but um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to get through my issues and PRs is open author Josh K. Goldberg. And then, are these just the PRs? Well, see if there are any that I can take action on. So this one, chore enabled most of strict type check internally. <laughs> Juicy. So yeah, um, our, our ESLint config locally, internally, uh, line 23, uh, we just enable recommended type check with the to do for strict type check. Get reset. Like, there we go. So now, oh my God, how many? Get pull upstream main. There we go. Get push force. Right, it was for ba, 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 dot yarn releases yarn whatever. Um, so actually, wait. If I ghpr checkout seven three three nine, this was approved. A big back. So I'm just gonna. Oh, I'm gonna have to resolve merge conflicts. That's annoying. This might, might take a while. So yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna work on this one. On, onto my own PRs. Self care is important. Enabling our strict type check. Actually, before I start typing this all out, let me get merge main. Uh, and then yarn releases yarn. So while that's running, rules internally. Uh, I'd sent a PR a bit back, but never merged. I think sometimes what I'll do is, uh, if only one other maintainer approves it, and it's something that touches a lot of our stuff, I'll just wait to, for a while to see, like, does another maintainer want to take a look? Does anyone have any comments? Uh, so where are the merge conflicts? ESLint RC. That's cool. Um, I added unnecessary condition and dynamic delete. And then for, okay, so I don't know where that merge conflict came from, but sure. And then convert TS, I'm just gonna, whenever I have a PR that has merge conflicts where I'm doing something big, like, I don't know, enabling a bunch of lint rules, I'll, um, I'll just like reset any conflicting files to main if possible. Um, and then I can always go back to the diff and see like, okay, what was the actual change? And restart ESLint, restart TS server. The issue was uh, strict boolean expressions is complaining. Whoop, didn't mean to hit that button. There we go, yeah. Unnecessarily compares a boolean value to a boolean instead of just using it directly. So we can just remove that little uh, unnecessary triple equals true. Nice. So if I did yarn, which did a, does it do a build? No. Um. So actually, while this is building, I'll just uh, commit. You know what? I, before I commit and take up our precious CI minutes, I'm going to finish the build locally. By the way, I'm curious. This is the first time I think I've ever run two ads in one stream. Is that annoying? Because like I personally hate ads as a Twitch user, and I, I really don't like them. But also, sometimes I have to go. So if I'm going to have time i feel like i might as well fill it with something that gives me a little money it does encourage people to sub that's true um one of the things interestingly i think that um one of the things that i try to do a turn off yeah no i feel you is i try to always be like 
source rather than results oriented, if that makes sense. Uh, like some people will be like, okay, I want to shoot for this result of like, I want to be a popular open source developer as an example. And that is a goal of mine. But um, I think I try to focus on the things that cause that result rather than the result itself. So like the analogy here is that like a lot of companies will like shove ads for the pro version of their free product in your face. Whereas I'm like, mm, I'd rather just you do a good product. So it's uh it's tough because like i need money you know um and i understand why companies are shoving the ads in but it also makes the experience worse which i don't like um yeah i think i think my personal like ethos slash rule right now is uh yar blah, blah, blah. just running the build and lint is i will never intentionally run an ad break when i'm doing anything and i will only i will only run it if um i was going to leave anyway <laughs> og sub before the ads yeah i don't know also, I'm just amused by this. Oh, hey, Link passes. Yay. So I can merge branch main. Commit and get. Ugh. Why do I always make this? Why? Load window. I always. I, these like big things that. It doesn't make sense to go through the UI. And never know what's happening. Get status, merge branch main. Yeah, Twitch is overboard with the ads, I think. But hey, they need money, so they're gonna focus on that. I have a to do to do a blog post about this. Yeah, I was on a stream last night where, I think, unbeknownst to the streamer, this wasn't Corbin. This was someone else. Um. It was like three minutes of ads, like a minute into watching it. Like, what the shit? Like, what? How is that good? Um, but yeah, if we look at my, um, I'll just show you my stream manager. Uh, if we go to the earnings, um, like subs, I got fourteen dollars last a uh, little over a week ago. Thanks. Um, yesterday I got four, and then if we look at Oh, I didn't run any ad breaks last month. Two minutes of ad breaks. Ads was um, how much was it? Oh, wait, where where is ads on this? Prime subs. Yeah, it's like almost nothing. Where is the... eleven seconds of ad time per hour? Thirty, but like the vet. How do I see what the? Uh... Oh, here it is. Breakdown. So in the month where I ran two ad breaks one minute each i think i got it what is the scroll position i'm not oh my god that's so frustrating <laughs> yeah i got uh 65 cents of ads is, is there we go not 85 so that's cool so we'll see what it is this period tomorrow but it's not a lot Oop. get i need to get that fixed where's my stream manager zero dollars <laughs> apparently twitch ads aren't as targeted compared to youtube someone says huh interesting if they're newer then yeah maybe they don't have all that fancy infra setup for all those evil things but cool so this looks good uh should be able to merge once builds pass <laughs> uh yep, yep, yep all right Looking back to the PRs for me, I see this big old one review approval on, uh... oh yeah, I talked about this like two hours ago now. Um, so eslint.style, yeah, a sip of coffee would be the 65 cents. Um, eslint.style, for those who missed it two hours ago, um, stylistic rules are including mostly formatting ones, um, are getting pulled out of eslint core and types of eslint. In, put into this eslint.style or eslint stylistic 
uh, package. Thank you, Anthony Fu. Um, because none of us want to maintain them anymore. It's a pain in the butt and it takes time away from much more valuable rules. But there are some people who legitimately don't want to use Prettier or an equivalent because they want the fine grained control of ESLint and Unified. So I'm happy to not deal with this crap anymore. Anthony's happy to have like a dedicated org to make progress on these things. We're all happy. And in our docs, um, we are updating our references to ESLint stylistic and such. Oh, good. Blue Sky crashed. Merging a docs PR around ESLint.style. Yeah. My God, Blue Sky, get your act together. You're supposed to conquer Twitter. Uh, so this, I left, yeah, this is another one where I left it open to see if anyone else would have suggestions or thoughts. Um, Anthony Fu looks good. James posted an info. Yeah, to be CI I was in a different way busted at the time. Yay. Merged. Down to 50 pull requests. That's just two pages. What? How's it still 51? Did someone just send a PR? Who sent a PR? You jerks. Okay. Um... All right, next up, docs warn against progressive type enhancements and rules. Um, oh boy, <laughs> let's look at this. Um, okay, so, um, is the Netlify deployment good? Can I look at this? Deploy preview, yeah. So this is in custom rules docs. Um, typed rules. Where is it? We recommend against changing rule logic based on whether services to program exist. In our experience, rules are generally surprised and rules behave differently with or without type permission. Additionally, if they misconfigure their ESLint config, they may not realize when rules start behaving differently. Right. So this is there was an issue that we filed in ourselves saying, hey, we should document this recommendation because it's not you know intuitive. Um, so, uh, could consider either getting type check behind an explicit option for the rule or creating two versions of the rule instead. I guess this did not update the deployment because I was just thinking in my head, huh, we should, we should add that. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this looks good. No one's commented since I got approval. Merge. Yay. Good shit. That's a draft. I'm not going to look at that. 50 pull requests. Yay. Oh, boy. So here's a fun thing about um, TypeScript and its type checker. Not super documented. It is documented. It's not undocumented. But uh, docs are a little lacking, to put it nicely. There's a lot of pain on our end from having to figure out TypeScript API things. Some of the TypeScript team members recently, especially Jake Bailey, have been really useful, but like, it's not ideal. I wish there was really nice docs. Uh, another old docs PR of mine linking to the TS type checker API docs that I recently added to. Yeah, so one of the things that wasn't super documented on the TypeScript side was like, how, what are the core concepts of like what a type is and symbol or whatever these terms are uh, on the type um, type checker APIs? So um, oh, you know what? I'm actually going to delete this tweet because uh, no one's reviewed it. But it's only been two weeks. Did I not post? Okay. So let me delete this, Ashley. So yeah, I just need to find someone to review this. This has only been two weeks. So I'm gonna just ping the triage team, ask someone to review it. Uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> if you look at the root issue, we um, I added this section to the TypeScript docs. Um, the wording here was rewritten by Daniel Rosenwasser, their PM head lead, I think, but... Uh, yeah, it was just like, what is a type checker? What is a symbol? What is a type? Not documented. Anyway, um, ooh, I should post this on Twitter. Right now, the TypeScript ESLint 404 page is kind of boring. 
page not found. Please contact the owner of the site. Uh, <laughs> so I added a new 404 page. <laughs> I think it's cute. Um, it makes me happy. And it's actually based off the learning typescript.com 404 page I made, which is also a TypeScript-y thing. I don't know. I, I like this. Um, no one has reviewed it. And next website test. I'm going to have to update this branch. Thanks, HyperUpCall. I do think it's cute. So I'm going to, again, you know what? Instead of pinging my teammates, I'm actually going to wear exploring, having, adding a cute 404 page to TypeScript ESLint.io. What do you all think? Something is off of the CI, or is it just me? No, 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 it's not just you. Um, you might have missed the part of the stream where I was complaining bitterly and profusely about this. Uh, yeah, I filed an issue. Um, I'll post it in the chat. And sent a PR. I think I just merged it. It might be this. Uh, you might have to update from the latest main, because I just merged this. Did it get the green check posthumously? Yeah. Netlify is whatever pending for forever, but this sh you are. All right, I'll take a look. Hooray! And okay, gotta wait for Netlify to redeploy before I share this out. Thanks, style shit, for the link. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, so here's what's happening. Um, we have too many builds and we're on the like open source free thing tier of GitHub. So sometimes it's, they just take a day, a few hours, a dozen hours, a couple dozen to run our stuff. Sorry, gonna have to wait. I hate this. And in fact, if you look at our polls queue, there are a whole bunch of like renovate ones, which are clogging it up. Sorry about that. Oh no, these are her. These are red angry. Good, quick question. What do you think about someone closing more than one good first issue in a repository? Assuming there are quite a few leaflets such, so like closing two or maybe three. It was always unclear to me if it literally meant good first issue. Great question, HyperCall. Um, I think two, maybe three is fine if there are a lot of other ones. Um, more than three and I'm like, what do you, like, you're not, the point of a good first issue is to get people on board, like to help them on board of the repo and get comfortable with it. So like if you're closing like a half dozen of them, then like you're taking the space of other people, which is what I'm guessing you're worried about. But yeah, like up to three, I think it's fine. Two would be ideal. Three, if you're really like, okay, this repo is hard. I want to get used to it. Like on uh, TypeScript, the repo, for example, that one can be pretty intense. So I think three is reasonable and fine. Um, does this need to update from main? I think so, yeah. Check out failures. Update from main. Oh boy. Okay, here's another PR that uh, I want triage someone from our team to look at. Let me just add. Cool. Um, ooh, here's a PR approved from Josh. Did I take a look at this already? Oh, right, right, right. This was from earlier in the stream. I can merge it. Nice. All right. Well, I'm running out of steam. Oh, yeah. With TSLint to ESLint. Conf Sorry. Yeah, I should have mentioned. Good, good call out. If it's like an old repo or like the issues have been sitting there for like months or years. Yeah, go ahead. It's if like it's you know a few issues filed within the last couple months and you're just like swapping through them you know sweeping yeah cool okay I just got a notice from Twitch pre-roll ads are on run an ad break to uh for them <laughs> I I used to be used to get a bench rise yeah style shit I'll review your PR and then I'll uh, go raid. I think Twitch is telling me I've been on for too long. So where is it? Which one? Let me 
Nope, 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 nope. Where's... Why is it not suggesting the author name? Okay, just that one. So here's a fun little automation on our end. When you re-request review, uh, when you re-request review, GitHub Actions bot, I set it up to remove the awaiting response label. Yay. Okay, what did I request? I hate you know, <laughs> I love it. Okay. This is so okay, let me just post it in the chat. Um you replace <laughs> single quote. Yeah, what happens if it's um <laughs> is it enums you hate? Strings or both? What if it's like this? I think this is a valid string. Let me, let me get a playground for you. Enum, gotcha. Please. Okay. Do you, <laughs> do you, do you have this? You've already thought of this. All right. Um, key with double quotes. Key with single quotes. Key with back tick. Let me see if I can break it. I'm going through the same process, by the way, right now with one of my PRs to ESLint core, where I'm touching up some stuff around regular expressions and character names or Unicode characters. And every time I post an update to the PR, it's a little bit more complex. And then someone from the core team's like, and here's a list of edge cases you didn't capture. And I'm like, God damn it. It's, it's very frustrating, but also really fun. All right. So let's say we got um, this, this situation here. Uh, no format. CD packages, ESLint plugin. Yarn, just no, unsafe, enum, com, watch. So when you have key with single quote quotes, whatever we want to call that, what does that become? I love CSS. I can't tell if you're trolling or not, but CSS is awesome, you know? Uh, wait a second. Is this, is this a bug? Back tick. I think. Uh... Oh, I didn't put it in the thing. Wait a second. Is it dot replace? Why is this broken? Now I'm curious. What did I do wrong here? Oh my God, I'm just touching the output. I'm silly goose. Uh, oh yeah, you know what? It looks good to me. I'm trying to think in my head of like, what's the, how can I break this? So you're escaping single quotes with, um... so any single apostrophe it's replaced with a whack whack. That's the Microsoft y way of referring to that. Backslash, backslash. Or is whack whack forward slash? I always forget. Whack n, whack t, whack s. I think that's probably fine because it was in the other issue. And this, this, that's like an existing bug. Good call though. That is in the other issue. Okay, so it's possible for um, a single quote. So what happens if I remove the, the backslashes? Is that still passed? 
I just I have the instinct that something is broken. I just can't figure out what it is, uh, which makes me think my instinct's probably wrong here. So that's nice. Switch this over to the files. <laughs> cool. Yeah, what makes me feel better about all this is that um, there is a, 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 like an existing set of bugs around this type of thing. So uh, looking great. Yeah, I'll approve this. And then I'll, before I do that, I'll also just link to the other issue you filed. What is was our thread? Cool. The existing bugs in make me not too motivated to get every single possible edge case in this PR. The tests you've added are pretty great. Thanks. Yeah. Nice. Great. Good. Uh, Great investigation resulting in a nice set of test coverage. Fixing. Thanks for working with this one. Any excuse to say the word shit in a professional context. Uh, we can always tackle more edge cases and follow up. Seven sub six eight. What are we actually? I haven't been using thanks. What the fudge did I just? Okay, alt equals crayon cartoon drawing of an. The purple, the fudge is this? Is that a cat bear thing, happily hugging and just hugging, gesture hugging and saying what is it saying? Thank you. Awesome. Well, this is a nice thing to see. And CI is waiting. So I'll put one approval uh, just to mark that we can approve it and merge it. And then, oh, there's the thread. I found this the thread. Yeah, we can tackle other issues. And I think you got all the existing one, all the introduced ones. Result. Yeah, I've been meaning to find one that does that. If anyone has any suggestions. It's really annoying to me that the platforms don't do it by default. Uh, okay. Bup, bup, bup. Is Netlify deployed? I'm going to have to go uh, re redo this thing. There's a... Uh, James showed me if you... Clear cache and retry, it should f fix itself. We have like some weird broken thing. Also, shoot, someone told me who I should raid. Was that you, Lady Blue Notes? I'm scrolling back up. Ship that code, that's right. Anyway, I'm tired. Let's go raid someone. Thank you. Follow your heart. All right, so one last plug for myself. Thanks so much, everyone. This was fun. This was two and a half hours. I don't normally stream this long. Great chat. Um, ooh, am I in Blue Sky more than Twitter? No, I'm still... I try to do all three of them, but then a lot of people are on Twitter only, so I end up being on Twitter more. But uh, eh. Also, Blue Sky keeps crashing, so that's a thing. But yeah, thanks, y'all. This was fun. Um, if you want to check out my work, I'm... Joshua K. Goldberg on basically everywhere. You can sponsor me. That, that would be nice. And uh, I'll re-upload all this stuff. Where's the... Fuck. Where's the... Where's the... Right there. I need to go for a run. I'm tired. So yeah, I'll stick around for a little bit with ship that code. But in the meantime, this was a pleasure. And if any of y'all want to talk open source, TypeScript, whatever, always feel free to hit me up. Bye, everyone.